Gülen puts an enormous emphasis on education. That is, education for all levels of society. And again, in the traditional societies, the ordinary people were neglected. They did not have access to education. So he calls for education. My name is Gregory Baum. I'm a retired professor uh, from McGill University. I belong to the Faculty of Religious Studies. I'm a Catholic theologian, and my particular professional interest mm -hmm. is in the reaction of the world religions to the arrival of modernity, to the modern technological society. And in this context, I have studied uh, the writings of uh, Fetula Gülen, because this is an example of uh, a response, a positive, critical, but positive response to modern society. Have I met with uh, your, this movement? I mean, I've, uh, I've known the group here in Montreal. Uh, I have participated in a number of events here in Montreal, but I have read books about the uh, Gülen movement. Yes, and I am very unhappy about <coughs> the uh, uh, totally unjustified accusations presently made by the Turkish government against him. I mean, he's, had, he's been accused before, uh, and it's always, um, it's never by people who carefully read his thought and who carefully study his relation to society. Well, as I say, I'm, uh, I admire it, but I, wouldn't, I can't really speak about it as a person who has studied it. As I mentioned before, my studies have been with the founder and his writings, and I fully support this, and the movement is inspired by him. And its activity in society uh, is based on his thought. I just recently wrote an article in which I develop the social thought of Fethullah Gülen. And I, uh, if I just mention this, because I think all these attitudes and these actions are carried forward by the Gülen movement. First of all, the positive attitude toward the sciences. That is a point that he made. There are some Muslim thinkers in the Orient who were critical of Western science. And he argued, no, we have to study the science, and this is positive. This is not necessarily leading to the secularization of society. On the contrary, the sciences uncover for us how marvelous God is who has created this world. Then uh, he has uh, a social ethic, a social ethic which he calls compassion, that includes tolerance, dialogue, and understanding. And again, the movement follows this. There is dialogue, there is tolerance, there is an attempt to understand the others and to be understood by the others. This is... Uh, then, uh, Gülen puts an enormous emphasis on education. That is, education uh, for all levels of society. And again, in the traditional societies, the ordinary people were neglected. They did not have access to education. So he calls for education. He trusts in education very much as an enlightenment thinker. He supports very much work and enterprise. That is, uh, see, I'm so sensitive to these issues because the Catholic religion, the Catholic Church, 
prior to the 20th century was in a very similar situation as Islam was in the past. And so there was very little emphasis on work and enterprise. Uh, uh, there was, uh, in traditional Catholicism, you had to accept the place in, in, in society which you had inherited. You were to do your work, yes, but you were not intended to improve your condition and to work hard and to change society. And uh, Gülen writes about this and he argues that the Quran calls us to be working hard, to be responsible for our society and to improve, yes, to improve the conditions of life. And again, this is an attitude that is fully supported by the movement. Then I have here uh, the fifth point uh, in his writings, and this is quite remarkable and admirable. He supports pluralism. That is, he, uh, he argues there are some important passages in the Quran uh, which says that God has created these plural cultures and these many religions. And the purpose of this is that we compete with one another in doing good. And so he has adopted this and he is a pluralist and he went to see the Pope in Rome and he went to see the uh, uh, chief rabbi in Jerusalem and he went to see the uh, Orthodox patriarch in, uh, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, he is a pluralist. He is a pluralist even in Turkey. He is a patriot. Uh, but he says Turkey is pluralistic because there are groups, small groups, that don't fit into the major stream and we have to respect them. And so again, I would say that the Gülen movement about which I have read puts all of these ideas into practice and so I have great admiration for his thought. I mean, I realize, I mean, I'm interested in other Muslim sages and thinkers who share this point of view. This movement that began in Islam at the end of the 19th century, and this is represented by thinkers in all countries, and in, um, in Turkey, I mean the contemporary expression of this movement, renewal movement, is uh, Gülen and the uh, uh, and, and the movement uh, that he has founded. Every religion is challenged by modernity. This is an enormous problem for all the religions and they have to wrestle how to react to it. And one reaction is to cling in a rigid way to the past and to say no to the modern society. And this is a kind of fundamentalist choice. And you find this in all religions. In, in Christianity you find this, in Judaism you find this, in Islam you find this. Another reaction is a creative reaction, that you listen to what is taking place in modernity. You are critical of the destructive potential of modern society, but you recognize the insights, the dimensions of humanization, the positive elements, and you support these positive elements. And therefore Gülen is an example of the creativity of religion uh, in, in, in the response to modernity. I think that uh, most people know very little about it, and therefore it is important to educate the West about the movement. In particular, <coughs> Uh, because um, uh, there are groups in Turkey, including the government, that has a very negative view of this movement. Uh, and therefore it's important to defend the movement in the West. I mean, Gülen himself has always stayed away from political parties. He always said that political parties come and go Islam remains and therefore he has remained aloof from them and he wants his movement to be non-partisan, at least in the sense not to be identified with a particular political party. And therefore the accusations against him are quite wrong. I am, 
I'm not totally surprised. I mean, there are daring, far-seeing political thinkers and social thinkers who challenge the existing order and then there is propaganda against them that is based on lies. I mean, I have studied the works of Tariq Ramadan and I was amazed to discover that in France there are books and articles written against him by people who've never studied his writings. They simply cite a few passages from the newspapers, from interviews. So I, I think that the, this happens to Gülen, uh, that there are these circles that really spread this wrong information and therefore uh, it is worthwhile to educate uh, people in the West about the movement. I read um, of an event that happened in Macedonia. This is a republic uh, that was created after the collapse of Yugoslavia. And it was the only republic that in which there was no violence. And this republic is made up of a majority of Orthodox Christians. There is a significant uh, minority of Albanian Muslims with their own culture. There is a tiny group of Methodists, Protestants, and of Jews, and of Catholics. And the religious leaders got together and said, we are afraid that all the other republics had an outburst of violence. What can we do to stop this? And they said, if we try to convert others to our religion, there'll be an outburst of violence. We have to choose between dialogue and death. And I think this to me is an image of the world. We have to choose between dialogue and death. And so I uh, uh, think that uh, Muslims involved in dialogue uh, are doing, uh, rendering a great service both to Islam and to, and to the world. At the heart of Islam is uh, charity, is the port of the poor, is sharing. And therefore I think that you expect this of, uh, of uh, Muslims uh, to be engaged in, 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 in such uh, charity activity. I mean, I think this is really at the center of, uh, yes, of most religions. Most religions have this. And uh, uh, so I think that uh, if these movements are active in non-Muslim countries, this is to their benefit. I mean, all religions have a, an ethical inheritance, have a cultural inheritance that promotes justice and peace and compassion. And so I think all religions today have to make a contribution to a peaceful world because we have the resources, each of us from our Roots have these resources, and very often secular people don't have these resources. There are some humanist movements for secular people that also promote compassion and justice and truth, but uh, they are rare. I mean, it's the religions have these resources, and religions have often forgotten this and have been concerned about defending themselves and become defensive or competitive, try to convert one another. And I think that today the world is so divided, there are so many conflicts and bloody conflicts that all religions, I believe, are called upon to put forward these values of uh, compassion, tolerance, justice, and Islam, Christianity, Judaism, all are capable of doing this. Interfaith dialogue as his met has demonstrated in its iftar dinners begins with a real social relationship. People have to actually know each other. They have to actually care about each other. Um, and, and that's the starting point. We can see that the Khidmat movement indeed does full service, educating the mind, feeding the poor, at the same time outreaching and building bridges.